Hello, I'm Nicole Jansizian for All Israel News, and I'm here today with Jody Samuels. Welcome, Jody. Thank uh, you for having me. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Uh, we're we have a lot to talk about, but first, I just want to uh, brag about you a little bit. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, Jody Samuels is an author, speaker, and a super mom and wife living in Jerusalem. Uh, she challenges mindsets and brings her passion for life to her work as a not-for-profit leader, community activist, disability advocate, and entrep entrepreneur. In her memoir, Chutzpah, Wisdom, and Wine, Jody shows how she uses resilience and a lot of humor to face life's challenges and come out on top. Jody founded Jewish International Connection in order to provide community for Jews living abroad and host hundreds of events a year. Uh, she also started Jody's Voice, which we're going to talk about, and you can uh, follow Jody's writings on her website and also at the Times of Israel, Jerusalem Post, and a bunch of other websites. Jody, I, um, I rumor has it that uh, you happen to host thousands of people a year for Shabbat dinner, and uh, is that true? <laughs> rumor is true. <laughs> rumor is true. Um, we're we're famous for how many guests we host every. Um, yeah, every week in the Samuels household is another adventure. Um, we, I joke that my children get to travel in their living room, but we pretty much host 50 guests, I would say, in our home almost every single Friday night, sometimes Saturday as well. And the reason I say my children travel in the living room is my guests come from all over the world. We host such diverse groups of people from different countries, different ethnicities, different religious backgrounds. And then we also host like Jews from Jerusalem as well in the mix. So it's quite this celebration at the Samuels every Friday. That's awesome. I, I think, you know what, if you can uh, explain for us, what is Shabbat dinner? Like what is Shabbat, let's say for, let's say if, you know, um, for people who have not celebrated Shabbat or kept Shabbat, and, um, and maybe don't live in Israel and have this kind of connection where everything shuts down from Friday night all through Saturday. Um, just, you know, explain for us a little bit about what is Shabbat and also, um, you know, why is there this gathering on that day? Okay, so Shabbat is the biblical commandment to rest on the seventh day. And Jews observe it, or certainly Orthodox Jews observe it, from sunset on the Friday to sunset on Saturday. And we have this like 25 hours where basically the idea of Shabbat is where we stop having man's dominance over creation. So there's a lot of things you're allowed to do, including enjoy yourself, you're allowed to eat. But what we don't do is something that would be considered creativity, something that would be considered work defined. And there's lots of definitions of work in the Torah of how you define work. Um, but for many people, the, the, the essential um, essence of Shabbat is that at the time when you stop, what's urgent for what's important. And it's that time when you focus on your family it's the time when you focus on community. It's the time when you focus on meaningful conversation, real engagement. And the reason why I think Shabbat is such an important experience, it's such an, it's an essential, it's almost like the glue that's kept Jewish people together over thousands of years, is because it is that one time that the world stops and the focus, you refocus. And for people who come from non-Jewish backgrounds, or even I host many Jewish people who haven't really been exposed to Shabbat, um, there's a real experiential opportunity to be part of a Shabbat experience and to really see, A, the time out, B, the meaningful conversation, and C, we also do a whole lot of rituals that are part of the Jewish experience, whether it's saying the blessing over wine or we bless our children, or we sing songs, usually they're songs of peace. Um, and it's a real meaningful experience that awakens the soul in a way that you just can't do when everybody's on your iPhone and everybody's running around and on a different schedule. 
that one one story you have in your book, I would love for you to uh, tell tell us about um, when you hosted a Chinese a group of Chinese tourists, and you plowed through and kept Shabbat. But tell us about the the that particular event. Uh, <laughs> it was one of my more crazy Shabbat stories. So there's this group, uh, a Chinese investor who regularly brings groups to Israel and he loves coming to my home and he feels the experience in my home is the most meaningful for his groups. And he asked the organization that connects um, families and uh, groups looking for an experience, he insisted he wanted us. There was only one challenge. We had just moved into a new apartment and I basically said, well, you know, we're doing paint work and we doing everything. We literally moved in on the Monday and like Shabbat dinner's Friday. And I was really a bit dubious that we'd be able to host. On Tuesday, I looked at the house and there was like plastic everywhere hanging, um, step ladders. Uh, I was like, this isn't going to work. And I sent a message and they sent back, no, it doesn't matter. They still want to come. They don't mind if it isn't perfect. There was another challenge. We had just moved in and all our stuff was in storage while they were painting. So this organization, Trip Out of a Lifetime, who connects, I said, don't worry, we'll send tables and chairs. And we didn't even have a fridge. They said they would send like ice boxes and an electrical hot plate. So all was good. I agreed, even though it was the most crazy thing. My husband was coming back from an overseas trip only on the Friday. And I'm now hosting 50 people in my very messy and very empty apartment besides the tables and chairs. And we have like a deadline with the Sabbath when we stop using electricity. That's it. And we were just before candle lighting time and we plugged in the electric hot plate to warm the food. And I hear click and all the electricity is gone. That's it. And when it's Shabbat in Jerusalem, the whole country is shut down, but certainly Jerusalem is like a ghost town. There's no possibility of finding an electrician. I also don't have time to even call and find an electrician. So here my house is no electricity. We're like, well, I didn't even know how I was going to warm the food. Fortunately, we still had a gas stovetop and we put foil containers upside down and on top of the gas stovetop and tried to warm the food that way. And we light candles for Shabbat. So I had some tea light candles that we were lighting. We lit as many tea light candles as we could. And then my guests arrived and I met them outside and I just explained to them what had happened. And I explained that this is over 2000 years of continuous Jewish history. And this is how we celebrate Shabbat. And we're in Jerusalem and there's really nothing I can do. And I invited them into my home in darkness and we had dinner by tea lights until the tea lights went out. (laughs) And then it was a, very romantic meal. Um, some people put on their iPhone flashlights. And then I guess the guests left and we were in pitch black. And oh. we got great reviews. People felt it was the most meaningful Shabbat experience. And I think that Chinese who have a very strong sense of heritage and culture appreciated, they just appreciated the fact that this was our religion and this was our values and that we were sticking by it. That's awesome. Um, This is the book, by the way, Chutzpah, Wisdom, and Wine. And there are many stories like this throughout the book. But um, the theme that I I really picked up and was, you know, as as a Christian, I really also could um, learn from is that that these commands that that God gave us um, um, in the in the Bible, that we um, just the how you um, make them happen, you know, despite the obstacles, um, despite, you know, this is what God said, we do it every day. And and you can see the the theme through the generations that has kept um, the the God of of the Bible uh, in our present day, you know, from, from the beginning, from Genesis to now, that you can see this thread throughout history. And I, learned so much, you know, just about my own faith as, as a Christian, um, how to keep, you know, God as the center to keep his, his principles. And you do that, you make sure that happens, you know, not just for Shabbat, but you also have other, other customs. 
Um, and also, I'm, uh, one of the other things that was really, uh, for me, um, so meaningful was how you you know, you lived, I mean, you know, you can talk a little, a little bit about this, but you lived in several different countries. But when you got to, you're originally from South Africa, but when you got to New York, which is where I'm from originally, and you saw um, a very large Jewish community, but a lot of expats who were disconnected, um, they didn't have like a central um, a synagogue or something that brought them together as, as Jews that helped them maintain their faith. But you also as an expat saw the need and, and filled it. And that's kind of how you started your, your organization, Jewish International Connection by creating connections. But if you, can you uh, tell us a little bit about that? What was your um, motivation and inspiration to do that? So we had moved to New York and we were like true wandering Jews. I had lived in 27 apartments in nine cities and five, four countries by the time I got to, New York and I moved to this big scary place and I'd been there exactly three weeks when someone asked me if I could host a meal for MBA students at Columbia University who had nowhere to go for Rosh Hashanah which is our Jewish New Year and asked they said like they're all these international Jewish students they don't have family would I be willing to host a group and I love hosting, as you can hear. So I landed up having 36 people from 30 countries. And I just had this epiphany that foreign Jews moving to the big city needed this Jewish home away from home. And that really launched my organization, which now has like 10,000 people come through the door here. And we in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Miami, New York, basically the cities where young professional Jews go. And we create this opportunity for people to have meaningful connection to each other, to community, to learn about Israel and to learn about their Jewish life. So the word connection is we're all about giving people the opportunity to connect and giving them meaningful experiences. And I think that Shabbat for me is the hallmark of meaningful experience. There's nothing that can give people all that 2,700 years of Jewish history um, in an experience. Right. That's a, uh, so, so in New York, so you started Jewish, Jewish International Connect, Connection New York and you were there for, how many years were you, were you in New York? Almost 15. 15. And then, so, so you have JIC also in Israel, but this is, so you would think that in, in Jerusalem, in, in, in Israel that the Jews have their connections. So what need did you see here to continue um, your organization here? You know, I guess we don't realize sometimes how much need there is until we put ourselves in a situation. So I basically had the interesting scenario of arriving in Israel. I made Aliyah, that means when you've like moved to Israel. And I arrived on a Thursday and I was speaking to someone on Thursday night. The next week was something called the International Worldwide Shabbat Project. All over the world, they celebrate Shabbat. And I was like, wow, what happening next week in Jerusalem? And this person said to me, oh, no, nothing. Like, Jerusalem doesn't really do the Shabbat Project. I was like, wow, that's interesting. If you looked at the Shabbat Project, they had 400, over 400 cities participating. I was like, how is it possible that Jerusalem the eternal capital of the Jewish people is not participating in a project where 400 other cities where Jews live is participating. So came Sunday morning, I decided maybe we should do something. So here I am like day four of my like life in Israel. And I knew some people in Israel and I started sending messages to everyone. And I kept like checking my send and received it. The messages actually got out, no one responded. I was like, let's do something. And I think people thought I was crazy. Of course, it took another friend of mine who had just moved the year before, who was like, okay, sure, let's do something. And we landed up organizing a challah bake. So Jewish people eat challah and Shabbat, and there's this big idea to bake the challah, which is the braided bread that we eat um, to represent the man, the manna that was given to the Jewish people when they were in the desert. And we organized and we started advertising it on Tuesday. And on Thursday, over 600 women showed up. 
And then I organized a big Shabbat meal for young professionals. And I just immediately saw, like, it's almost like you build and they will come. But just because we were in Jerusalem and the eternal capital of the Jewish people in a Jewish state didn't mean that people had so many opportunities to connect. And I think specifically for people who are foreigners in a country, they don't have that sense of community. They don't have that sense of connection. And for Jewish people, that's such a central part of Jewish life. So we, by default, become their community. We become their family. We become what's missing, what they like left when they left their homes. That's, I, I believe that uh, Christians have a lot to learn um, from the Jews about community, about, you know, building these kind of communities and connections and really, um, you know, putting, putting these principles central as part of our activities and building, you know, building around it. So I, I was, uh, I'd say it was illuminating for me just to see how I could put this practically into my life as well. Can't say I've succeeded. I do not <laughs> post thousands for sure ever for anything. Um, and I don't think I ever will, but in any case, um, you do things big. And that's one thing that you see in this book. It's like Jody does things big and you've got to see throughout the book how how, you know, I mean, just, it, it's hilarious. A lot of um, hilarious adventures, also a lot of serious ones. Um, but one thing that I want to wrap up with, um, you know, a lot of uh, Christians who love Israel, support Israel, and they, a lot of them think they, they want to move here, you know, like if only they could move to Israel and uh, that they visit and support and love. Um, now you, made Aliyah, you were legally in, invited to Israel to get your citizenship easy. You know, it's just like for Jewish people, it's it's automatic. But as we read in your book, you didn't love Israel. So um, I want to ask you, what was it, what would you tell tell these these Christians who are trying to get to Israel, would, would love to live in Israel? You were able to, you got it, you became a citizen and you were like, what am I doing here? So I think I see this, the spark in so many of my Shabbat guests, what you talk about, and they'll be like, oh, I would love to live in Israel. But what they really want is they want to live in a place that feels meaningful and where you feel connected to a source. I think we live in a world that people are like just searching and searching and searching. And you have these moments when you live in Israel, as crazy as this place is, as chaotic as it is as sometimes dangerous as it might appear. And there's so many like things about this place that on paper you'd be like, but why do you want to really live there? And yet that there's these moments that it pulls at your heartstrings. And it's those moments, it's like when you feel connected, when it just makes sense and you feel you're part of something greater and you're not just like a spoke in a wheel, but you have an existential meaning. And I think that's 100% what drove me and what inspired me and I saw a place that my children would have a more meaningful existence and I felt that there's like these moments even when I'm very challenged living here that I feel that it's so meaningful and I know that people don't have the same meaning outside and at the same time Israel is an absolutely crazy chaotic place and people said to me, but Jody, you lived in Australia and you lived in New Zealand and you lived in England and you lived in South Africa and you lived in um, New York. Like, surely Israel's not so different to all those places. And I'm like, no, it is. It's like, there's just a whole different set of rules. I mean, I thought after living in New York, a crazy place and an expensive place, a place that was like lack of greenery, living in small apartments with rude, loud people that would prepare me for Israel. but no, <laughs> Israel is a complete, complete category on its own. So it's, I sort of have this yin yang relationship with Israel between my love for what it stands for and the meaning I find and the meaning I see my children have. And then like just the craziness of living here and adapting to it all. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, one thing I also related to is uh, it's tough. It's a definitely a tough place, but you see, um, what what your kids have the opportunity to do, which is, you know, not 
figure out what, you, you know, I think you write in your book, like what movie they're going to go to on the weekend, but you know, where they're going to volunteer. And it's like, really, you know, that's, that's really um, special. And it's really driven into the kids here, this um, whole sense of community and tikkun olam, you know, which is repairing the world. And you talk about that a lot in, in your book, which um, again, uh, you know, just something, you know, for, for me to learn from and really like, you know, my faith, I think the Jews really make the, their faith practical. And I think uh, Christians are on the side of spiritual. And I think we need a, a we need a balance of both. So, um, but I, I love your honesty. And I, if you guys, you know, I would say if, if people want to get like a real honest outlook of, um, of what it's like in Israel. And, um, and I mean, you don't, cover only Israel, you cover a lot, but, um, you know, I would say where can, where can people, um, get your book? So the books available on Amazon is an ebook and in print as well. And, you know, you can follow me on Jody's voice and you can see my articles, but I also invite people to reach out to me and come to my house with some of the famous Samuel's hospitality where you see living Jewish life in action. And I really believe that the best way to build bridges and is to sit with other people at a meal and like just open your home and share your experiences and to be honest and to be real. And I would love people to bring their groups, bring themselves, bring their families, and it's an open invitation. And we'd love to have the opportunity to connect with more people, both through my book, but also in person. It's awesome. And uh, I can personally recommend um, the Shabbat <laughs> experience because we, we, we were there. It's about a year ago now, I think. And, um, and it was, it's, it's exactly what you said. There were so many different people and they were from all over and um, a lot of Lachimes, like to life, <laughs> a lot of, uh, you know, a very awesome celebration of life. So Jody, this is awesome. There's so much more to talk about, so we should definitely do a part two. But um, I wanted to focus sure. on that. And uh, now that people are coming back to the country, they should hook up with Shabbat of Life. That they should be coming to, you know, come and experience a real um, traditional and biblical Shabbat. So we'd love to have you. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Jody Samuels. Thank you, Nicole.